Light creates photographs, but the light also destroys them. Photograph procedures of conservation are quite similar to those of the papers. Low temperature, low humidity, stored in dark places, never exposed to the daylight. In clean environments, with no dust, and stored in acid-free containers. But how many kinds of photographs are conserved in archives, libraries, museums, and houses? There are photographs since 1840, but the photography is an invention that was developed since the earlier studies on optics made by the ancient Greeks. In the 4th century before Christ, Aristotle explained the principle of the camera obscura. Light travels in straight lines and passing through a small hole into a dark box, it produces an inverted image on the opposite wall. Indeed, ancient Greeks had a wrong idea about our perception of images. They believed that vision resulted from light rays emitted by the eyes, like a kind of radar vision. An Iraqi from the 10th century physicist and mathematician called al hassan changed this point of view, demonstrating that images come to us from outside and are interpreted by our brain. If a mirror should possess a soul, it would see the image that is formed on it. At the Renaissance, artists like Canaletto or Leonardo da Vinci used the camera obscura in order to improve their works. What had not yet achieved at that time was to fix the image on support and that it could remain printed. In 1825, the indefatigable French inventor Nicephon Nieps, after several attempts, could fix and conserve an image on a metallic plate coated with bitumen of urea or asphalt and later fixed with sodium hyposulfite. Nieps's print captures the image of a 17th century Flemish engraving of a man leading a horse. It could be considered the world's first photogravure. In 1826, Nips places a tin plate covered with a layer of asphalt into a camera obscura. He places the box in front of his window and after an eight hours exposition, he could obtain the image of a building and a tree. In 1828, he used a silver plate and iodine vapor, obtaining better results. In 1829, Nips signed an agreement with a painter and theatrical sonographer. Louis Daguerre, who was also interested in images printed by light. After four years working together in 1833, Nibs died, and Daguerre followed up with experimentation, this time using iodine vapors as sensibilizers on a thin copper sheet coated with polished silver. From this reaction, silver iodide is obtained which is a more light-sensitive material than bitumen of Julia. Just by coincidence, he discovers that if an image is exposed and treated with mercury vapor, the image is immediately revealed. In 1839, the daguerreotype is a fact. Daguerre introduces it to the French Academy of Sciences. He is rewarded with 4,000 francs and the invention is publicly announced. Daguerreotypes were a revolution since 1840 to 1860. They show crisp, sharply focused images, monochromatic, and many times of a stunning realism. A daguerreotype is a copper plate coated with silver, mercury, 
and sometimes gold. Over this plate is printed through a photochemical process an image in a direct exposition. It means that the girl type is a unique image. The image is inverted from its original position. Words and numbers will be seen reversed. In good state of conservation, its surface is like a mirror, and depending on the angle of vision, the image is seen negative or positive. They should be preserved protected by a glass, separated a couple of millimeters from the plates. Everything is sealed by a frame of pliable brass by its four borders, and into a wooden or leather case. This is the way daguerreotypes were originally framed. Initially, the exposure time was too long, between 15 and 20 minutes. In 1855, this time was shortened to approximately 10 seconds, giving more sensitivity to the silver plate with iodine, bromine and chlorine vapors and increasing the lens speed. Ambrotides were made on glass plates and they had a very short existence, only until 1865. The image is a low exposure negative and when it's presented against a black background appears to be a positive image. The image is formed on a wet collodion emulsion, a solution of cotton, nitric and sulfuric acid dissolved in ether, covered with silver to make it more sensitive. Ferrotypes, also called tin types, as they were inexpensive, were used up to the first years of the 20th century, more or less until 1915. It was a variation on the wet collodion process, using as support of the image a thin sheet of iron blackened by painting or lacquering. They produced plain, flat images or grayish tones with low contrast. Sometimes they were varnished to protect the image and to make them more brilliant. Near 1840, photographers were hardly trying to get multiple copies from a positive image. The only successful attempt at that time was the calotype, invented by William Henry Fox Talbot in 1840, which allowed getting positives by simple contact printing. It means a negative pressed tightly against a sheet of sensitized photographic paper. But calotypes had poor quality because the paper used for the process was a common writing paper. Imperfections of the paper's grain were transferred to the image. Calotypes couldn't displace daguerreotypes because of their low-quality images. In 1850, a photo printer, Louis Desiré de Blancard, solves the problem. He coated the papers with an emulsion of a white albumen snow shake and salt, creating a shiny surface. This layer was sensitized with a solution of silver nitrate, obtaining a very high definition image. Albumens were used until the end of the 19th century, but the albumen paper was used until 1920. These photos were mounted on cardboard, and the final image, now 
finally appear in the right position, not reversed. During the mid-19th century, the carte de visite or visiting cards, small individual pictures like a kind of personal IDs, became one of the more popular uses of the albumen method. With the slogan, you press the button, we do the rest, in 1884, George Eastman, from New York, invented the paper of chemical development, which consisted in a paper treated with a dry gel of silver chloride, gel silver bromide or gel silver chloride bromide. Formerly, photographers needed to transport the plates with all the chemical products and development was made by exposure to sunlight. With the new small negatives, the sensitivity of that paper produced quick development under electric light, and they also could make enlargements. Very soon, the Kodak Eastman also launched to the market the photographic roll. These are the black and white pictures we have always seen. Good condition of photos preservation depends on not too much exposition to the light. Light creates images, but also destroys them. Photos must be touched by the reds and, if it's possible, with cotton gloves. By any reason, staples or metallic clips should be attached. Photos must be stored in clean rooms. If stored in albums, they should be acid-free, never PVC plastics, but polyester sheets. Album sheets should also be acid-free papers. These kinds of papers are sold by photographic stores. Sick pictures with fungus or insects should be stored apart from the others. Otherwise, the healthy pictures will become soon infected. To digitize an image is a good way of to preserve it. Even though an original is much more valuable, and it should be carefully conserved.